is going on, guys? I am Sep Tom Sear George, the coach of the San Francisco Oregon Niners, and today I am here to bring you my rounds one and round two match in the token minority bracket round tournament thing. March Madness Tournament, that's what I forgot to say. So the Token Minority is hosted in March Madness Tournament. If you guys did not see the two videos I posted or see all the other videos from all the other YouTubers that were in it, but um, they hosted a tournament on April 9th, which was Saturday. It went for like 10 hours long. It, was, it started with a pool, and then only two out of the five people got out of the pool. I did make it out of my pool, which is why I obviously am uploading the, obviously uploading the brackets right now. Um... And yeah, so I decided not to record the pool battles just because there were f there were four pool battles on top of the of the of the bracket battles. I w wouldn't be uploading the final battle until like maybe Sunday, so I wanted to get that out sooner. Um, as well as I felt like the pool wasn't as intense as the brackets. But anyway, guys, so the first person I had to face was under the radar. YouTube a lot of you probably know him if you don't his link is in the description below um, he's the coach of the Baltimore Braviaries and he had a very threatening team his team was Manaphy the Scizor the Gliscor Darmanitan the Mega Ampharos Cloister and Gar and the and the Gardevoir now looking at my team as you guys already saw I also probably put it up there at the start of the video um, I have the Latios, the Gardevoir, the Hip, out on the Weavile, the Snorlax, the Gyarados, and the Breloom. I decided Breloom was not going to be necessary in this match. Although the Mach Punch would have been extremely nice, as you guys can see. I didn't feel it was necessary to bring, just because of the set I have on my on my Weavile, as well as just in general, my team kind of handles this pretty well. So, I decided to bring a Life Orb Latios just because I can fire off Dracos, I'll do a, sh a shit ton of damage, but at the same time, I can go for Dragon Pulses and then switch it up, so if he's in on the Mega Ampharos and I Dragon Pulse him and he goes into Scizor, I don't have minus two special attack then, I can go for HP Fire and just take him out, and as well as the, if the Mana Fee comes in, I can drop a Draco on it because that's a huge threat, etc, etc. So, that is that set. I have enough speed to outspeed a max speed mana feed just in case, and then the rest is in bulk. Next up, I have the Mega Gardevoir. I decided to bring, so I decided to bring carry for this match, and this Pokemon is just a savage in general. I have the Hyper Voice and the, and the Psychic. That's the only coverage, move I know, only coverage moves I need to hit his entire team. Have the Healing Wish in case I want to he heal up like my Latios or something, or my Hippowdon, or my anything really. Um, then I have the Taunt. Just so I can taunt like the Gliscor um, or the Mana Fee if it comes down to it, as well as um, the Cloister if I don't want it to set up and has like a Focus Sash and it wants to set up on me. So I have that for that. Max Speed so I can Speed tie the Mana Fee and Max Special Attack because I just want to hit things as hard as possible. Next up I have Hippowdon with the Rocky Helmet. I don't have a really good switch into the likes of like Scizor. Um, and Darmanitan. I guess I do have my Gyarados, but I wanted to use that as an offensive Pokemon just because it r really destroys his team offensively. So, so I decided to run the r Rocky Helmet on the Hippowdon and the Sand Force over Sand Stream. The reason I have Sand f Force over Sand Stream is because if I have Sand Stream, it hurts my team more than it hurts his team, so I don't see a reason to bring it. I have the Stealth Rocks, the Earthquake, the Slack Off, and the Ice Fang. The Ice Fang is mainly for the Gliscor. Um, it's actually only for the Glide score, and then the Rocky Helmets, obviously, so I can catch the U-turns and do 16% to them. And I can get on my rocks, and then every time they come in, they're taking 25 and the 16 if they decide to U-turn out. Next up, I have the Weavile. Weavile, this is an interesting set. So I have the Babiri Berry, and I have the Knock Off, the Ice will Crash, the Quick Tech, and the SD. I have enough speed to outspeed a um, Max Speed Manaphy again. And I have Knock Off, an Icicle Crash, Quick Attack, and the Swords Dance. So, the reason I have Quick Attack, that's the main thing in this set. So, the reason I have Quick Attack is because... So, Ice Shard is resisted by the Scizor, the Darmanitan, and the Cloister, and the Manaphy. Now, those are the Pokemon that I want to Ice Shard the most. So, I decided, you know what? Quick Attack is going to do more. It's going to hit the Cloister harder. It's going to hit the Darmanitan harder. It's going to hit the Manaphy harder. So... I already outspeed the Mega Ampharos. I'm going to go for Icicle Crash on that. I already outspeed the Gardevoir. I'm going to go for Quick Attack or Icicle Crash on that or Knock Off. And then the Scizor. I have the Babiri Berry for, for that. So I don't really need to care about really 
quick attacking that thing. So the Babiri Berry is the steer reducing berry. And the pickpocket so I can steal the item after I lose my berry. Um, SD up and just knock off the entire world. On on after that, I have Snorlax. AV Snorlax is an absolute absolute savage. I have max HP. Well, not max HP. I have, I have max special defense, 200 HP, and an adamant nature with 56 in attack. With the body slam, the fire punch, the ice punch, and the earthquake. With this set, I can take any hit off the cloister, any hit off the mega Ampharos, any hit off the Manaphy, as well as I have the coverage to take on basically everything on his team, which is exactly what I want from Snorlax. And finally, I have a DD Gyarados with the with the Earthquake, the Dragon Dance, the Waterfall, and the Stone Edge. Max attack and max speed, because if I have max speed, I can outspeed a choice of Gardevoir after plus one. And I have Earthquake, the Waterfall, and the Stone Edge. Earthquake and Waterfall hit everything, and the Stone Edge is mainly for the Cloister. So without further ado, guys, I'm going to get right on into the match. Alright guys, so after that insane cut right there, we are now here as he decided to bring the Manaphy, the Scizor, the Cloister, the Darmanitan, and the Gliscor, and the Gardevoir. He did not bring his Mega Ampharos, which is kind of expected, because the only thing that it would actually be able to really hit is honestly nothing, because I outspeed him with everything that wants to KO him, so I can understand why he didn't bring it, but he brought the Manaphy. The Manaphy's a threat, the Darmanitan's a threat, everything on this man's team is a threat and can possibly set up on me. So, I'm just looking at his team and I think, I need my rocks up. I need, I, I need my rocks up right now, I don't have a choice about that, so I'm just going to play the video. I'm going to lead off with my Hippowdon, just to get up my rocks. He leads off with the Manaphy, actually, and I think, you know what, he's not going to tail gloat on turn one. I have a lot of things that outspeed him still, and I'm going to predict him to want to probably go for an Ice Beam predicting the Latios coming, so I get up my rocks, he goes for Scald, he does not get the burn, thankfully. On this turn, I go into Gardevoir, expecting, you know what, now he might Ice Beam me. He does Ice Beam on my Gardevoir, now he goes for Scald again, and it's actually going to burn me, which is unfortunate, but it shows me that he has a lot of speed investment on this thing. Um, now I'm just going to go for a Hyper Voice, do a lot of damage to Tiny Blue, and I'm just going to stay in, I'm, uh, I'm going to go for Hyper Voice again, and I'm actually going to take out the Manaphy turn 4, which is great. However, my team is pretty weakened already, but we did get up the rocks, which is important. He's going to go out into Nightwing right here, which is the Gliscor. Now, I don't expect him to have Defog, because if he has Defog, I believe he can't have the Toxic Orb. I expect him to have Defog, if anything, on the Scizor. He's just going to protect right there, actually. And my Gyarados is in, and I'm thinking, you know what? Unless he has a Thunder Fang, which I doubt he will, my Gyarados can set up right here. So I go for a Dragon Dance, and that's exactly what happens. He's going to go into Cloister right here, because it is the only thing that can take me on. Or so he thinks. I do go for the Stone Edge. I do connect with my Stone Edge and clean Oko that Cloister. So Cloister, huge threat out of the way now. Now my Gyarados, plus one Gyarados. Now here, I calced it, and I can survive a Rock Slide. It'll do about 97% at max, so he did get a max roll there. Can't flinch me. I go for Waterfall and I take out the Darmanitan. So this is a already a huge dent in Under the Radar's team, which is great for me. He's just going to go into a Scizor. I know he's going to BP me, but there's no reason of saving my Gyarados anymore, in my opinion, as I just let him take me out. Now, I go into my Snorlax. I do have the Fire Punch. I'm not going to overpredict. I'm not going to go for Ice Punch or anything in case he just has the superpower and decides to go for it. He decides to switch in and Glide Score here, as I do go for the Fire Punch. does about 14%. Getting a heal kind of all that back with the poison heal and now he he goes for toxic i should have run immunity on this um but i expected to be dealing with darmanin's hand more than a glide score and i go for ice punch just 56 percent and now this is where i sort of start to play bad in my opinion i start playing very bad against this nightwing um i know an ice punch is going to take him out so i actually over predict i have no reason to over predict anymore he goes for poison jab and i actually go for the fire punch right here expecting the scissor to come out no reason to over predict there don't if you're ahead in the game, guys, you don't have to be making making predictions like that. I'm going to go for a nice punch this time, and the Snorlax is going to go down to Toxic. So I could have taken out the Glide Score and just had a 2v5 situation, but instead I had to deal with now this Glide Score again. And I go to Weavile, and I make another over prediction. I go for SD right here, and he goes for a Poison Jab versus me and gets the Poison, which is very annoying. However, on this turn, I go for, for an Ice Go Crash, as it actually takes it out, so... I take out the Gliscor, and I do have the Babiri Berry. If he's not banded, I believe I can take one hit. I can take one BP off this thing. I mean, he's not a Life Orb or banded or anything, and I go for Knock Off. He actually does not go for his 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 BP, so my Babiri Berry never even gets used. He's gonna, I'm gonna, he's gonna go into his Gardevoir, and he says GG, which tells me that this thing is not Choice Scarf. I'm just gonna go for Knock Off. It was a Soul Fest actually, and I end up taking out the Gardevoir. So that is going to be the first game, guys. 
And without further ado, I'm going to get into the team builder for round two. All right, guys, I am here with my team builder now for round two against Rizzy Pal. Riz, the man I ask for nudes from every single day. That is an inside joke. None of you probably understand that and probably think I'm a creep. No, it's a joke, guys. Um, his link will also be in the description below. I actually played this guy in the pools. He was in my pool, and we did defeat him in pools, but... The second round is always the harder round, in my opinion, because they know your plans, and you know something that worked really well, so y y you don't really want to change it, except at the same time, you're like, well, I feel like I should change it now, but anyway, so his team is the M Mega Sabli, the Talonflame, the R Raikou, the Suicune, the Amoongus, the Metagross, and the H and the Hitmontop. My immediately, my immediate observation with this man's team is he has nothing to take a choice specs draco meter from eladio so i decided you know what we're going maximum power with this we're going modest max special attack choice specs draco meteor and we're going to absolutely demolish this man's team with it his only switch in his av metagross and av av metagross cannot take a choice specs draco meter very well it can switch in maybe one time on it and then after that I just completely destroy it after that. So that is why I decided to run this set. And I only need 32 EVs in my speed to outspeed. I don't even know. He has a massive speed creep. I believe it is to outspeed the max speed hit on top or, or the max speed Metagross. Um, and, and then other than that, he has Talonflame and the Raikou, which I can't outspeed anyway. So I'm not going to run max speed for them. So I, I only need that much speed. Then I have a lot of bulk on this Latios, which is great for me. The Psy Shock, the HP Fire, and the Defog, just for coverage, kind of, and the Defog, just in case he gets hazards up for no reason. Next up, I'm running Max Defensive Hip Out on again. With the Rocky Helmet, I have the Stealth Rocks, the Earthquake, the Stone Edge, and the Slack Off. I have the Stone Edge to take on the Talon Flame, the Slack Off, obviously, the Earthquake for coverage, and the Stealth Rocks because rocks are great in general. Next up, hand in hand with my. With my choice specs Latios, I don't need a lot of speed on this Gardevoir, so I can run a decent amount of bulk. I decided to invest my bulk in defense this time because I had it in HP before, and then I want to be able to take a bullet punch better from a, either the Hitmon top or the Metagross or an Acrobatics off a of Talon Flame. So I decided to run that in my defense. Now, last time I ran the Will-O-Wisp over the Substitute. However, in this battle, I did catch his Metagross on the switch on the Willow, and I predicted the switch, and, and I just went for Wisp. So this time, I decided to switch it up. I'm going to run the Substitute this time. If I get behind a sub, Carry absolutely destroys this man's team. So it's the same thing with Latios. They're only switching his AV Metagross. And even then, I can Hyper Voice, then I Shadow Ball, then I just do a lot of damage in general. So that's the plan with that. Now, this is my Gyarados right here. This Gyarados set was initially... Dragon Dance, Substitute, the Earthquake, and the Bounce, because that's the only coverage I needed for his team. However, in the first battle, I wasn't able to sweep because he ran R Roar on the Suicune, as well as I wasn't able to deal with his Talonflame that well because I didn't have a solid move to, to actually hit the Talonflame. So what I decided to do is, after Dragon Dance, my Roar will outspeed the Suicune's Roar, so I can Roar him out if he tries to Roar me out, as well as I decide to take Earthquake off and just run Waterfall. It does the same thing. It does a lot of damage to everything, no matter what. And I decide to run more of a bulky spread, just with 176 speed, so after plus one, I can outspeed a max speed Raikou. Then I run a, a lot of special defense, so I could set up on the, on the legs of, like, a Moongus. He can't, he, he can't break my sub. Neither can Suicune, so... And actually, no, that was for substitutes, so I don't know why I have that investment now. But I did. I did for the battle, and it worked out pretty well in the battle. So, next up, I have my Breloom, which is sh which is the Shrooms, of course. I have SD, the Bullet Seed, the Watmill Berry Natural Gift, and then Mach Punch. So, Watmill Berry Natural Gift is a 100 base power fire type move. I go for SD, and I just... N n natural gift the Amoongus away. It can't live after a plus two no matter what. There's like a 5% chance that he survives. And even then, if, if if it does somehow survive, I have done my job. I have successfully taken out the Amoongus, which I think he's going to bring only because it's the only thing that actually takes on my takes on my, on my Breloom on the defensive side. 
Next up, I have Brolax right here, which is the Chapel Berry, Rest, and Sleep Talk. Rock Slide and Body Slam. I have Rock Slide to deal with Talon Flame, and I have Body Slam to hit everything else. Rest and Sleep Talk in case I have to put something to sleep. I have this thing, Chapel Berry to take on the Hit on Top, etc., etc. Anyways, guys, that is going to be the team builder, so without further ado, let me get right on into the video. Alright, guys, we are here with the battle against Rizzy Pal, so... He brought the team I expected him to bring, the Hitmontop, the Sableye, the Talonflame, the Amoongus, the Suicune, and the Metagross. I do not, which Pokemon did he actually not bring? I'm going to pull it up and you guys are going to see it. He did not end up bringing the Raikou. To be honest, I expected the Raikou just because it hits my team pr pretty hard. Especially if he had the HP Ice to deal with my, um, to do with my Hitpowdon. But anyways, he didn't bring it, which is good for me. And looking at his team, I can lead off with my M M Mega Gardevoir against almost anything except the Metagross. I don't think he'll lead off with the Metagross because I could just go with my with my Breloom, and he doesn't really want that. So without further ado, let's get into it. I, I lead off with my with my Gardevoir. He does lead off with his Metagross. I decide to get out of there right away. I I'm gonna go into my Hit Pad on his. He goes for a Meteor Mash. I actually m m misses it. Really not too important because. All that happens is he doesn't take Rocking Helmet damage. And he is AV, I believe, so it would have actually helped me more if he did touch me. Go for Rocks. He's just going to go into Sabla. He's going to Mega up. And I believe right here he's just going to fire off Will-O-Wisp. I do have the Synchronize, actually. So what's actually going to happen is I'm going to get the burn off on him, which is great for me because now the Sabla can't really take me on that well. Um, and he's going to go into the Suicune right here. I'm going to fire off a Hyper Voice. And this Hyper Voice... You guys are going to see, this Hyper Voice doesn't do as much as I thought it would. That is a specially defensive Suicune if I've ever seen one. That is a max specially defensive Suicune, actually. So, he knows he can't take another Hyper Voice. He's going to he's gonna switch out right here, going to his Metagross. As I'm going to fire up the Hyper Voice, get a crit, 40% him. And I'm like, from that range, I'm pretty sure Shadow Ball can't take him out. I'm just going to go for it. Don't think he'll BP. I go for Shadow Ball, get another crit, take out the Metagross. So, two crits later, the... Th the Metagross goes down, and that's just what happens. So he goes into Talonflame right here. I know he's going to go for a Roost, but I'm not going to overpredict. I'm not just going to stay in and lose my, lose my Gardevoir f for no reason when it kills everything on his team. So I'm going to go in, into my Hippowdon right here. I go for Stone Edge. Do 61% to him. And I don't know why, but right here I expected after the Roost that my, that my Earthquake would do more. So I, I go for Earthquake. Just 44%. So... I can't really win this battle. He's just going to be getting up damage off on me. Um, I'll be doing the same amount to him because of the Sandstorm, and then it'll it'll wear out. But he goes for Roost here. I expect that. Go into my Latios, and now I drop a Draco on something. And nothing on his team, especially because the Metagross is gone now. Nothing on this man's team will take a Draco Meteor, and Latios is going to drop that real quick, and we're going to take out the Sablite in one clean hit. So that Pokemon goes down. What he's going to do here is going to go out into his hit on top. I am afraid of the, like, of the Sucker Punch, so I decide to, s to switch out right here. Don't want to make a risky play or anything this early on, so I'm, I'm going to go into my hip out on. He goes for Rapid Spin, predicting me to want to switch, as, as also I am at minus two, so it was a pretty safe Rapid Spin. And I know he's going to switch right here. I decide to go back into my, into my Latios. He goes for a low kick, actually, predicting me to stay in. I don't know what he thought I would do, but... In my opinion, that was not the best play for him. But here, I know he's going to Sucker Punch now. And I know this is the perfect time to take out the Amoongus. So I'm going to set up a Swords Dance right here. The Sablai is dead. The Metagross is dead. So I have no concerns with going for SD right here. I don't have the Spore or anything. Go for Swords Dance. And without, f without further ado, the signature move of the Arcaniners is Natural Gift. Come on. Come on, guys. We just Natural Gift the Amoongus away. We get a crit. The crit did not matter unless we got the absolute lowest roll in the world. And he goes into Talon Flame. I decide, you know what? I can save um, my Breloom. I decide to go into Carry right here. Just has a Death Fodder. As he actually goes for a, a Bulk Up right now. Now, I decide to go for a Psychic. He's just going to Bulk Up again, actually. And my Psychic is doing way more than he can recover. So, I have two more good Psychics left in me if he decides not to Acrobatics and, and take me out. Go for Psychic. Do 54%. So, we are very carefully... <laughs> lowering his HP. Now, he decides to roost again. I don't know why he's roosting. Um, he could have saved more health if he just went for the... Um, if he just went for the... Uh, now I'm blanking. 
for the acrobatics. Yep, yeah, that's the word. So I decided to roar him out right here as I roar him out into the Suicune. Right here, I could have gone for a Dragon Dance. I should have gone for a Dragon Dance right here. What I actually do is I decide to switch out into my Latios as he decides to go out into his hit him on top. If I had Dragon Dance there, I could have just bounced and taken him out. Hindsight 2020 though, he decides to go for a low kick right here, predicting me to switch. That's great. I go for Bullet Seed because I know I can take him out with just more than two, but I get two. And that sucks for me. Because I lose my hit on top, I lose my best way of taking out the Suicune. And that's just unfortunate. But I decided right here, you know what? Now I can get up my rocks. Now they're up to stay. And I can just proceed to take out the Town Flame now. So. This is the only threat I have left to deal with is this Talon Flame. I have to make sure it can't s set up to, s to, s to, s to sweep me. Um, I get off the Intimidate on him. And I'm just going to go for a Dragon Dance right here. Because I know... Do I Dragon Dance? No, I Waterfall first and he burns me. So I don't have any attack investment on this thing. And that's actually going to bite me in the butt right here. I, I don't need the bulk that I have. Maybe the max HP, but I don't need the special defense bulk. So he's going to roost up again as I go for a... Roar right here, roar him out into the Suicune, and right here I decide, you know what? If I'm ever gonna get my my Gyarados to sweep, it would be right now. So what I decide to do is just Dragon Dance up right here. I don't have a reason not to. He can't burn me already. I know he has the roar, but he's not gonna go for roar right now because he's on too low of health. So right here I decide I'm gonna roar. I'm gonna roar him out. And, it's, and, I, and, I, and I'm going to see what I can do. So, he gets the rest on the Sleep Talk, which sucks for him. I go for Roar. Roar him out into the Hitmon top, which means the Hitmon top goes down, which means he has no Death Fodder, which is great for me. I am sitting pretty at 63% as he decides to go into the, into the Suicune. Um, again, I'm just going to Roar him out again as he tries to get the Roar, gets the rest, and I Roar him out into the Talonflame. Now, what this means is that this Talonflame has to Roost or it's going to die. It has to roost or it's going down. So I have to apply the pressure immediately with my waterfall. So he's going to roost up. I go for waterfall. It's 58%. That's a min roll right there. I can do up to like 68% or something like that. Maybe 66. I think I hit 66 right here actually. So we're doing a lot of damage to this talent flame. This is a bulky talent flame though. This is taking not a lot of damage from my hits now. He decides to roost up one more time expecting his acrobatics to be able to take me out now it's a roll if i can kill him on his next roost but he doesn't want to take that risk he's gonna go for acrobatics and my max hp actually saves me right there as i'm able to take him out with a waterfall on the next one so my gyarados is gonna go down and the suicune is gonna come back out and i'm gonna put this part on fast because what actually ends up happening is this suicune is so specially defensive a modest choice specs draco meteor isn't able to take it out and i'm like what the hell why is this suicune so goddamn bulky like what is going on right now i go in i go out in, like into my snorlax because i know his set i know he has the roar i know he has the scald and i know he has the rest talk so i know he can't set up on me so i'm not too concerned about that i'm just thinking you know what i'm gonna put him in a range of draco meter i'm gonna go out into my latios and i'm gonna drop it on him no reason not to can continue to go for body since he actually gets the burn right here unfortunate for me because now my now now my body same is doing absolutely nothing to him as here i decide you know what if i get the sand stream up i might be able to take him out with a draco on the next turn as i'm looking at it and i calced it it's actually n not possible to take him out however because he's so specially defensive my side shock does 45 percent to him which does mean he can't survive these However, now he gets the roar on the rest talk, so I get roared out into my sweet, into my sweet goon, into my curse lax again. Curse lax is bro lax. This is a snorlax, not a curse lax. Even the a curse lax is snorlax, but he gets the scald here. He actually, he actually, get, actually gets the burn. So now I'm putting in a position where if I miss my Draco meteor, I could be in a bad spot. As I drop my Draco, I connect and we take the second round match. 2-0 against Rizzy Pow. That was a good game, bro. Um, you just didn't have a switch in for Latios. That's just what it was at the, like at the end. You didn't have a way of dealing with it. I did crit the Metagross, but in the end, I just would have dropped Dracos on it, and it could not survive the Draco Meteors. But anyways, guys, that is round one and round two of the bracket. So after this battle, we were in the, in the semifinals. So we got the semifinals and the finals after that. 
without further ado, guys, I am the coach of the San Francisco Arcanines. I'll talk to you guys next time. Peace out. <laughs>